Hi there, my name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. If you're one of my regular viewers, you'll know that this is usually where I do an Alice Cooper album. Uh, but, since I jumped the gun into an Alice Cooper album early due to the new release, which you can check out, you know, uh, two different variations of the review for Detroit Stories. There's a nice short cropped one and then a long-winded one. So anyways, uh, because I did do that and it was out of the normal sequence where I would do an Alice Cooper album, uh, what I have opted to do is review the most recent Hollywood Vampires album, Rise. Now, Hollywood Vampires, if you don't know the story or the origins, was actually a drinking group or a drinking club in Hollywood. <gasps> and it comprised of a lot of famous musicians from the 70s. Alice Cooper was one of the big names. Uh, John Lennon has been associated. Mickey Dolan's of the Beatles. I know there's other ones, but those are the three I remember a distinct picture of, so it's, you know, written that way. The idea being when the Hollywood vampires got together, it was Alice Cooper and a bunch of musicians paying homage to everybody who had passed on already due to drugs, booze, whatever. This is the follow-up. This time around, the Hollywood vampires are basically comprised of Alice Cooper, Joe Perry, Johnny Depp, Tommy Hendrickson, and Glenn Sobel. Uh, and it's... This album, while it has a couple covers, is basically an original album. And it's cool. It, it really is. It's cool to see what everybody on here could do working together as basically a super group. I have mixed kind of views on this album. And the reason I have mixed views is there's some stuff on the album. It's really nice that they decide, okay, we have CD. We're going to work with a CD format. Let's just fill it out, right? So they go with 16 songs on here. A lot of the stuff on here is really honestly fluff. I don't think this album will have necessarily the longevity that the original Hollywood Vampires album has. But I do really appreciate the content that's on here. The artistic experimentation and the enjoyment, the playing and writing Honestly, good new rock music. Uh, the downside is one of the biggest standouts on here is honestly a cover. When most of it's originals. So let's get into the actual tracks. The album opens with I Want My Now. This is a really good straightforward rock song. It kicks off the album beautifully. It's got a good driving beat to it. Just pumping, going, nonstop. Get ya. Takes you to where you need to be. Fires up the album perfectly is basically what it comes down to. Then you automatically hit one of the filler tracks, which is Good People Are Hard to Find. Um, it's a great little filler scape. You don't really pay attention. And you kind of just, it's there and it's gone. And that goes into Who's Laughing Now. I really dig Who's Laughing Now, especially when it gets in the chorus. The chorus is simple. It's fun. It's repetitive. But it, it's, ha, 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 who's laughing now, man? You know, it, it, it's this great little kind of, for lack of anything else, you know, that, that's what it honestly boils down to. It's, it's this great middle finger. That goes to another little filler track of How the Glass Fell, meh. And then the Boogeyman Surprise. I really dig Boogeyman Surprise. It's got this great little kind of creepy, slinky kind of tone. It's not overly original per se, especially when you look at the fact that this is Alice Cooper, right? But it's new enough to say, you know, if someone were to go, oh, I'm going to pick up 
this Hollywood Vampires album because Johnny Depp's on it. They're not going to necessarily know Alice Cooper's catalog. You know, they might know the greatest hits or whatever. So, Boogeyman Surprise isn't going to be, to them, is going to be something new and exciting. To me, it's like, okay, this is another great tune that Alice kind of worked on. Uh, and then you go to Welcome to the Bushwhackers. Uh, now, on the back of the album, they make sure to even put featuring Jeff Beck and John Waters. Sometimes you got to put these names on here because, you know, that's who they are. Uh, so, the, welcome to the Bushwhackers. This one's a fun song. It's not anything insane or crazy. It, music, it's great. It's got this kind of country rockabilly-esque feel to it. On this album, it's nice and slightly out of place. You know, it helps it stand out a little bit. At the same time... It's a little bit of a sore thumb, kind of. But I like it as a sore thumb. I like the type of sore thumb this is. So I should stop calling it a sore thumb. <laughs> that goes to the wrong bandage, which, eh, whatever. And then you got, you can't put your arms around a memory. Um, I've got mixed feelings about this song. And... It really comes down to, I I appreciate the song. I dig the rawness of the song. I dig the original version, which was done by... I could not remember the name properly. Here we go. Follow the finger. Okay, so... Um, that original version that was done, I've heard it. It's good. It's cool. I dig it. I don't know exactly why everybody fell in love with it. Musically, lyrically, I get it. Sort of. And, I mean, I've heard Duff McKagan cover it with uh, Guns N' Roses, although it was basically just Duff by himself that did it. You know, it was on a spaghetti incident. You know, it was okay that way. This is Joe Perry, and usually I like when Joe Perry does a bluesy kind of tune because Joe Perry's got a kind of great bluesy kind of voice. You know, generic bluesy voice, but a great kind of bluesy voice. And, you know, he plays a good bluesy guitar you know in a rock manner per se but on this track there's just something about it i think it's honestly the song but it just it doesn't work for me and the, even the production on this song like they purposely play with the production to give it that old kind of rustic sound to make it sound more like the original and it's just I, I really wish the song did more for me than it do, does, but it, it just doesn't. Uh, from there we go, get from around me. That one's all right. The most standout song on this album, as I mentioned before, is a cover song to me. And it's Heroes, David Bowie's Heroes. And the cover they do on here is absolutely spectacular. And what I really dig about it is it's showcasing Johnny Depp on the vocals. And I really do dig Johnny Depp getting out there and singing the song and the way he delivers it. And it's really cool to hear him honestly be featured on a song that way. And people are going to say, well, yeah, it's uh, because of the feud between Bowie and Cooper. It has nothing to do with the feud between Bowie and Cooper because I've heard Alice actually perform... Bowie songs, okay? So it has nothing to do with that. Heroes, honestly, Alice's voice would not be right for Heroes. Johnny Depp's voice is definitely the better voice. That's just a good, good, good call, honestly. Beautiful cover. I absolutely love it. It's the one song on this album I absolutely always listen to, and I will, I will never skip this. This version of Heroes would definitely go on. Like if I was putting together putting together a mixtape of cover songs, I would definitely put this cover on there. All right, uh, and that goes into uh, Pitiful Beauty, which is another throwaway. Uh, new Threat doesn't really do anything for me either, honestly. So at this point, we get to track thirteen, and we're got. We've got Mr. Spider. Okay, so... I gotta quit saying that. This is 
an Alice Cooper song through and through, Mr. Spider. I mean, the title alone says it. But it's not just Alice singing on this. Johnny's singing on it as well. And it's really cool to listen to. I really dig it. This would have been a really good Alice Cooper song. Really, really good Alice song. Maybe a little cliche on an Alice Cooper album. Less cliche on the Hollywood Vampires album. Which is really cool that way. I like that this is a band full of great musicians coming together and composing and creating all these songs. And I'll get into the writing credits shortly. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out before I finish off all this is the album was produced by Alice Cooper, Joe Perry, Johnny Depp, and Tommy Hendrickson. So they made all the calls on here. And Tommy Hendrickson specifically was the executive producer, which means he did most of the pony up and got to make all the final judgment calls at the end of the day. Um, but getting back into the album, uh, Mr. Spider was a great tune that way as an Alice Cooper song. And I really dig it that way. And a really fantastic. After that, we're into, we got to rise. This song is so much fun. I get up every time. You can't help but get up, man. This is a virgin song. Man. You know, just that it's supposed to be, we got to rise. It's a fun Let's song. Go. It is just fun. You know, there's some inner political BS in there, but it's understandable and it makes sense. That goes to People Who Died. People Who Died is... I want to say... Both a positive and kind of a somber... Celebration of friends that had passed away. Because... The original Hollywood Vampires album was all tributes to all these buddies of Alice Cooper's and stuff like that, that or, or, you know, whoever was on the albums or whatnot, that had passed away due to abuse, and, you know, a lot of them were part of the 27 Club, stuff like that. And this time around, the song People Who Died, instead of being reflective of the famous people, it's just a nod out to their actual friends, stuff like that, you know? Actual... Like, there's one in there they're specifically talking... Uh, I remember them specifically mentioning a buddy that got leukemia as a kid, but he died when he was 63 or something, or 65. And he was still alive or something. Like, he died at 65, still alive or something like that. I I don't remember the exact line. But it was... You know, it, it's a great song that way. It's not just, Oh, these people who died. You know? Not like that. But is it a great song the whole way around? Is it a song you're going to be singing for years? Sure, if the album's on. If the album's not on, I mean, I wouldn't put it on a mix, and it's not something that, you know, I'm going to listen to you on my MP3 player. You know, if I'm in a good rut, and a, you know, good flow when it comes through, I'll let it play through. But if I'm in the middle of skipping songs, I'm not going to stop on it. Then we get to Congratulations. Congratulations finishes out the album. It is the type of song that should finish out an album. It's really good that way. I really dig Congratulations. Congratulations is purely an album track, though. It is not... A lot of album cuts I like where the last song's on there. They're, they'll end up on a mixtape or whatnot. Or, you know, like, I'll throw them on here or there and I'll really dig that song. Congratulations is, if I were putting together kind of an artsier kind of mix, I would put congratulations on it. I would not put congratulations on a regular rock kind of mix. It would kill the flow, I think. Um, this is a very poetic kind of piece, a very artistic kind of piece. And I very much enjoy the way it's done the way it's presented and the way that the music flows in the background the music it is accompaniment to a spoken word that that's how i take it and as a person who truly appreciates the spoken word especially the musical accompaniment it's fantastic beautiful to me it's a totally appealing song 
but it's not going to be for everyone. The whole way around, depending on where you feel with the first album, depends on where you're going to feel with this album. If you digged the first Hollywood Vampires album purely as a novelty, look at these artists performing these songs, haha, it's this great super group, then this album may not work as much for you because this is not a novelty act. This is serious writing. Some of it is cliche, like I mentioned. You know, there's definitely some, you can tell it's Alice Cooper and their kind of elements. But you've got Alice Cooper, Johnny Depp, who is dark in his own right, who has worked with Marilyn Manson on music as well. Johnny Depp is, has a darker personality. He's going to write just darker songs. It's going to happen. Joe Perry, well, being pigeonholed as a member of Aerosmith and therefore must write beautiful poppy songs or, you know, blah, 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 blah. He's the dark horse of the band, per se. You know, he's the shadowy kind of figure. Everybody else is kind of this brightish light. He's this kind of darkish kind of character, you know. The only one that has, like, the dark hair, the dark look, the dark elements. Tommy Hendrickson, if you ever get to see him live or whatnot, also has that kind of darker edge to him. So it makes sense that this is going to be a darker Alice Cooper like album in that manner, in that way. This is not a novelty album, though. It, it isn't, you know. It, it's definitely a musical experimentation album. It's definitely a bunch of guys making really good music. I don't know if I would recommend this album for everybody. I would definitely say that it is worth checking out. There's a reason it was one of the best rock albums of the year in 2019, or it might have been 2019's best rock album of the year. I remember the big best rock album of the year, blah, 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 stuff posted everywhere. Um, it really is a great rock album, but... It comes with some buyer bewares to it. Um, I think if you took out all the filler tracks, if if all the all the just novelty filler just to make it a long filled out album or to help people get extra writing credits, because there is some of that in here, and that that's the thing is you know whoever appears on the song except for the drummer generally tends to get a writing credit for the song, it, for most of this stuff. So there's a lot of these ones in here where it's just arrangements by Tommy and Depp and you kind of go, eh, whatever. You take out all that fluff stuff and you made it just, just the songs on this album. It would be a much more superior album to me. I don't think the filler tracks work for them the way they would hope that they had hoped for. You know, there's some people that can really do the filler tracks really well. Rob Zombie tends to do the filler tracks really well, I find. Uh, Typo Negative did them pretty decent, depending on. But this album, the filler tracks, I find kind of hurt it a little bit. Anyways, those are my views. So, leave me your views. That's what the comment section is for. Otherwise, subscribe. That way you get notifications when new episodes come out and uh peace love take care lanny says the same have a good one